so indicate the horizontal asymptotes and or the vertical asymptotes. All right, so this is the one where you are looking for the dotted lines. All right, and this graph, all right, is obviously hard to see. That's kind of why I put those in. Vertical asymptote right there, vertical asymptote right there. They will be dotted on the piece of paper for the most part. There's a horizontal one that goes right here. Okay, now when you write them, these up and down ones are the vertical asymptotes. So I'm just going to do VA for vertical asymptote. All right, vertical asymptotes are up and down lines. So when you write them as equations, it needs to be X equals whatever the number is. This one goes through negative two. So this is X equals negative two. All right, this one goes through two. So this is X equals two. All right, so there are your vertical asymptotes on that one. All right, now we have the horizontal asymptote right there that is going through a negative one on the graph. All right, so again, I'm gonna label that as an HA for horizontal asymptote. The equation of a horizontal line is Y equals, so that's gonna be a Y equals, and then the number it goes through, which is a negative one. Okay, so like say on test number two, you're gonna have a picture like this. It will have a vertical asymptotes and then a line, horizontal asymptotes and a line, and you will be expected to write those equations using the y equals and the x equals appropriately, okay? All right, so on the second one here, all right, that is a clear dotted line right there. All right, so that's gonna be my vertical asymptote there. Here is two. And if you look along this axis, they're counting by two, so two, four, six, eight, and this is roughly halfway in between. So then we're gonna say that that one is X equals a one. All right. And then again, this dotted line was easy to see. Again, it's a horizontal line. So that means that would be my horizontal asymptote. All right, again, this axis is also counting by two. So two, four, six. So halfway in between there again would be at one because it's horizontal, it's Y equals one. So then there's two there. All right, now this one is a good one because we talked about those asymptotes. If they happen to be the x-axis or the y-axis, then they generally don't put dotted lines on there. Now, in all honesty on this one, if you are looking, you probably can't see it being projected, but this one, this graph did have a dotted line up and down. Why they did the up and down one and not the vertical one, I don't know, or not the horizontal one, I don't know. All right, but there would be the vertical asymptote. All right, because we can see the graph as it goes to infinity upward, it's going to get infinitely close to it, but never touch it. So it does have a vertical asymptote there at X equals zero. All right, and then the other one, I don't know, some people might want to have a debate about it, but it's clearly showing that this is going to come down and get infinitely close and never touch it. All right, we even talked about how the graphing calculator, when you do it in a window, all right, then in, in the graphing calculator window, it sometimes even looks like it's on that x-axis, but it is not. The function one over x squared, which is what they give you, definitely does have that horizontal asymptote right there. So you just kind of have to look at the graph and see where it's getting infinitely close at, okay? So horizontal asymptote there would be a y equals zero. All right, so those are intended. I always put those on test number two because they're intended to be really easy questions, okay? All right, now let's talk about the next one for a little bit. All right, I've got on there, use your calculator, no work required, okay? So for those people that have the graphing calculator, all right, it makes it a whole lot easier if you take this function and you put it in Y1 as if you were gonna graph it. And then if you go to your table of values, if you go to your table of values and the table is set on um, ask, then it will ask you what number do you want to generate? And you can type in a six and a two and a three really, really quickly. So it works really, really fast, all right? You can do it really, really fast. However, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you don't have to do it that way. Take six, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in, work it out, get a number on top, get a number on the bottom, and then divide them out. Okay, so it's a straightforward process. All right, um, I do have videos on my website if you want to know how to use that table of values, set the calculator to ask, so that all you have to do is then type that in one time in Y equals, and then you can put those in there really quickly. 
All right. Um, if you are doing this by hand, we can look at that denominator right there. That denominator is an x minus two. All right, x minus two. So when I plug the values in, just taking a quick glance at these, when I plug a two in on the bottom there, I'm going to have a two minus zero. Sorry, two minus two, which results in a zero, and I can't divide by zero. All right, so hopefully this one is even whether you're doing it on calculator or not doing it on calculator is an obvious one that stands out to you as it does not exist. Okay, it does not exist. It literally says in the directions to write does not exist. All right, so if you are paying attention to what the directions say on the test, they're going to tell you what to write. If the function value does not exist, indicate that, okay? So you don't have to remember that does not exist. It'll be right there in the directions, okay? Um, I don't know that I have answers to these all worked out. Anybody have them? Anybody have an answer to the first one? 31 half? 31, crap, I wrote 32. 31 over two? 31 halves. Okay, all right. And then, I mean, I've got the calculator on my phone. I could do it if I had to, preferably, I don't want to. Katie, have you figured out how to do it yet? The calculator? No, still working on it. Yeah. Squared minus 6x plus 6x helps if you type the equation incorrectly. If you don't. And it's not going to work. Minus 10. Minus 2. Ask. So, what did you get for the last one? 17. Ooh, 17 even? Okay. Just out of curiosity, let's see if I actually got 17. Yep. Okay. So I put three of those on there like that. It has the exact same set of directions. All right. On test number two, it'll literally say use calculator, no work required. But if you don't have the calculator, then you'll show your work for it. All right. But these should come out relatively easy. Um, you could put a decimal for that, depending on how the calculator is set. If you would happen to get a repeating number for one of these, you can show it as a repeating one. All right. So if, if any one of them would have turned out to be like, you know, maybe 6.188888, you could write it as 6.18 with a line over. Okay. We wouldn't want to round it. All right. We're going to want to show those repeating decimals if it were to come up that way. Okay. These did not, so we didn't have to worry about it. All right. So. If I did there. Okay, so those are two things that we did very, very early on in this chapter. We looked at the asymptotes and we looked at evaluating functions. So the thing is here, you've got to remember overall procedure for how do you find the domain of a rational function. All right, and the, the deal was, or the rule was, to take that denominator, whatever it is, take the denominator and then set it equal to zero solve it and see what the exclusions were. All right, so on this one, I can do x minus three, set it equal to zero. That's an easy equation to solve. All right, so then I've got x equals three, or in other words, x cannot equal three because I'm coming up with my exclusions. This is the number that must be excluded from the domain in order to make this fact, uh, rational function um, be a, like a legit function, all right? If I put, if I let x equal three, that would make that denominator zero. We can't divide by zero, all right? We did, we drew little number lines when I did this initially. There at three, there would be the open dot because we would not include that, but we would include all the numbers to the left. We would include all the numbers to the right. And then that gave us how many regions we were shading, how many different intervals we had to have for our interval notation answer with negative infinity being down here and infinity being here. So that makes then the domain of this function curvy bracket negative infinity all the way up to three. We skipped over the three curvy brackets on the three because we have to omit that value and then all the way up to positive infinity. 
Okay, so that's what the domain looks like in interval notation. Okay, now we do the same thing for question number six. We take that denominator and we set it equal to zero. So I'm going to have an x plus seven to the second power set it equal to zero. All right, first thing I want to do is get rid of the squared feature. So I'm going to take square root of both sides. Square root and square undoes each other. Technically, there would be a plus or minus in front of that square root on the right-hand side, but square root zero is zero, so it doesn't make any difference. I would be down to an x plus seven equals zero, and then I would be down to an x equals a negative seven, and then really technically that's x does not equal negative seven. All right, so same thing. If I needed to draw the number line, I would have my negative seven here. I would not include it, but I would include all the values on the left. I would include all the values on the right. And then I've got the negative infinity on the far left, positive infinity on the far right. All right, so both of these examples only skipped over one number. And that's possible. Okay, curvy brackets on everything, skip over that negative seven, go all the way up to infinity. All right, I believe when we originally had lectured over the domain of a rational function, I had done some examples where there were two exclusions. All right, there can be more than one number that is excluded from the domain. All right, so again, all right, these are going to be two questions on test number two. All right, it's gonna basically look just like that, the exact same set of directions and ask you to do it in interval notation. All right, and then seven, eight, and nine, okay, refers to this rational function right here. All right, we had done one of these last week sometime. I gave you a rational function and then it's like, okay, here's a bunch of questions. I can ask lots of questions from rational functions. All right, I'm not sure that we did any like this before, but we can. All right, this is our function notation, right? So function notation is generally f of x, right? So f of x, which means this number right here is my x value, all right? And then I plug it into the function and it spits out a value, it spits out the y value. So if you can conceptually remember that, all right, then that corresponds to what? An x, y ordered pair on the graph. Then you're gonna be able to do these relatively easy, I think. All right, this says f of zero. Okay, so zero, I take zero and plug it in for the x value, plug it into the f function. This is my f function over here. Even if it's not labeled, I'll label it right now. When I plug it in, I plug it in for the x value or I go to the x axis and I go to zero. And then from there, I either choose to go up or down wherever it's gonna to be to hit the function itself. So then that would be that point right there. And it's gonna spit out a Y value of eight. So this one has an, is an eight as an answer. All right, and then that right there, that ordered pair for that Y intercept there is zero, eight. So then you see the zero and the eight right there. All right, so for this one, it says to take one, plug it into the function. I'm plugging it into the function for the X value. So I go to the x-axis and I go to one. All right, but it doesn't matter whether I go up or whether I go down, I'm never going to touch the function because that's a vertical asymptote. All right, so f of one, um, you can say does not exist. You can also say is undefined. All right, but f of one for this function does not have a value. When I do f of four, again, I'm gonna take four, I'm gonna plug it into my function. I'm plugging it in for the x value. So I go to the, four that's on the x-axis. And then on that one, I don't have to move up or down because I'm already touching the function. I'm already touching the function, which is right there. Okay, that ordered pair is four, zero. So four, it spits out a y value of zero. When I do f of negative two, I'm taking negative two, plugging it into the function for x. So I go to the x-axis, I go to negative two, and again, I don't have to move up or down because I'm already touching the function, which means that also spits out a zero value. Okay, so they're meant to be kind of easy as long as you understand um, how to read the function notation. All right, now three, give the vertical asymptotes just like the first three questions. There is one vertical asymptote in this. Okay, it's right there, it goes through one. So I must write it as an equation and show it as X equals vertical asymptotes or X horizontal or y. 
All right, and then these two questions technically are a repeat of some questions that we've already done. List the x-intercepts, list the y-intercepts, all right? And a lot of people will miss these on the test because they don't read this right here. It says using ordered pairs, all right? It is bolded, I, I bolded on the test, but sometimes that doesn't help, okay? So x-intercepts are the points at which the graph crosses the x-axis, right? Well, I already identified those points there and there. The four and the negative two. So I have a four zero and I have a negative two zero. So if you can answer them up here, then you're probably going to be able to answer them down here as well. Same thing for the y intercept. We've already identified that's the point at which the graph crosses the y axis. It crosses right there. We identified that point as being zero eight. So you write it as an ordered pair and it's zero eight. 